treaties we've made in the not too distant past. You cannot assume that they are like the people of your God. They are not. My people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call to the Most High, none at all exalt him. In other words, when you get in trouble, he's speaking to Israel and he's saying, Israel, that's when you come back and you worship the God of Israel for a while. Well, it's on Sunday, but you know, then you go back and worship the Baals on Tuesday and Thursday. You know what's amazing? You know what's one of the biggest things that has helped church growth? For the economy to go down the tube. When there's trouble, when war breaks out. There's an old saying, and I found it to be true in my military experience, there are no atheists in foxholes. You wanna see people that have never prayed before in their life? I keep my stories to myself. But I'll tell you this, everybody's susceptible to a conversation with a chaplain when you've come back to the rear and you've seen some of the things you've seen. And for those who have questions about whether or not you should prepare yourself for hard times, I want to say this. For a Christian, one of the biggest threats isn't what other people can do to you in hard times. If you lose a job, whatever the situation is, having some things put back is really helpful. But that's not really one of the biggest things for a Christian. You know what it is? Everybody I have ever met, and my experience in the military proved it to me, you let get pe people get pushed to the wall hard enough. You let people be scared enough. And you get let people get desperate enough. And I'm not talking about the enemy. I'm talking about the people who wear the same uniform you do. You watch how vicious the kid who just came off the, vac the basketball court eight weeks before can become. It's partially about who you're going to be in hard times. Because if you put yourself in a place where your family's starving, where you have no way to defend them from those who are intent, and it's either you or them, you'll find out there's things inside of you you never knew were there. That's what happened to Israel. All the veneer of their society all the veneer of their godliness, it faded pretty quick. You want to continue to be right with your family? Make a provision. Eighth verse, how can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I set you like Zebulim? My heart churns within me. My sympathy is stirred. The parent standing at the court. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in your midst. And I will not come with terror. They shall walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. And when he roars, then his sons shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like a bird from Egypt, like a dove from the land of Assyria. It's his promise to bring them home. And I will let them dwell in their houses, says the Lord. Ephraim has encircled me with lies and the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah still walks with God, even with the Holy One who is faithful. Twelfth chapter. Ephraim feeds on the wind. In other words, your economy is bogus. And pursues the east wind. From the east was Assyria. He daily increases lies and desolation. Also, they make a covenant with the Assyrians. 
and oil is carried off to Egypt. All the stuff that you put by that you had confidence in, everything is going to diminish and it's going to be like nothing. You know what I've noticed? When I'm not right with God, it doesn't make any difference how much money I make. It's still not enough. There's nothing left. I don't have the provisions that I need to have. I, and conversely, I found when my heart's been right with God and I put him in first place in all circumstances to include my finance, I've never been without. There were some thin days. If I take a good look at me, I could use a thin day or two. <laughs> the Lord also brings a charge against Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his deeds, he will recompense him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. Jacob means heel snatcher. And in his strength, he struggled with God. Yes, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor for him then. How did he prevail? He prevailed because God put him in a position where he would never rebel again. He found him in Bethel and he spoke to us. This is the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his memorable name. So you, by the help of your God, return, observe mercy and justice and wait on your God continually. Things do not change from one book to the other, one prophet to another, one testament being an old to the New Testament. It doesn't change. The word says, another prophet, Micah, he has shown me, old man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee? That's to love mercy and to do justly and to walk humbly with your God. Seventh verse, a cunning Canaanite, deceitful scales are in his hand. Talking about Jacob before he was changed. He loves to oppress. And Ephraim said, surely I have become rich. I have found wealth for myself. In all my labors they shall find in me no iniquity that is sin. But I am the Lord your God. Ever since the land of Egypt, I will again make you dwell in tents as in the days of the appointed feast. I'm going to take you back to where you started. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions. I have given symbols through the, wild, through the witness of the prophets. Though Gilead has idols, and surely they are vanity. In other words, they are of your creation. You made gods in your own image to bolster your own purposes. Though they sacrifice bulls in Gilgal, indeed, their altars shall be heaps in the furrows of the field. Your religion is going to take you no place. Your religion will take you to the heart and providence of God. Jacob fled to the country of Syria. Israel served for a spouse, and for a wife he tended sheep. This is a history lesson if you're familiar. By, by the, a prophet of the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, Moses. And by a prophet, he was preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore, his Lord will leave the guilt of his bloodshed upon him and return his reproach upon him. You notice he says Egypt. It's Egypt that provoked him to anger. He's telling them the trouble that you're coming into you want to know why it's happening? Because I am going to rescue you when you come to the place where all your colors are run dry. Everything that you thought was wonderful and good to eat, it tastes like sawdust. When you come to the place where you realize the only real thing you lack is God. Thirteenth chapter. When Ephraim spoke trembling, now he's broken. When Ephraim spoke trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended through Baal worship, he died. In other words, 
Remember what I said before we prayed? <coughs> Every man needs to see himself as he is. And he needs to see God and God's view of him as he sees him. Ephraim, when you come to the place where you're broken before God, Israel, when you've given up on all the things that you had confidence in, and you say, I'm going home. I'm going to seek God with a whole heart. I'm going to tell him, it doesn't matter what you want of me, God. It doesn't matter where you choose to send me or what you choose to do. I'm going to let go of everything else. And I want to speak to somebody here this morning. I don't do this very often. I believe the <coughs> gifts of the Spirit are still for the church today. If you for call of God on your life, I'm going to tell you, don't walk away from it. Give up on your plans and embrace his. It's the only thing that's going to bring you peace. And I'll let that go at that. Now they sin more and more and have made for themselves molded images, idols of silver according to their skill. All of it is the work of craftsmen. They say to them, let the men who sacrifice kiss the calves. The history here is that not only did they make the calves, the golden calves, and set them in places and then declare, it is the calf that brought us out of Egypt, not Yahweh. That's what they told the people. The reason that we have these great benefits is because of our own skill and the calves that we made and the priests had to pump up the services. So what they did is they made a new rule. Not only do you sacrifice to the calves, you got to kiss it. No kidding. <clears throat> It became more and more and more outrageous. They thought the answer to a relationship with God was to make their services more and more and more outrageous. And it had no impact. Nothing. Therefore, they shall be like the morning cloud and like the early dew that passes away, like chaff blown off from a threshing floor, like smoke from a chimney. In other words... Yeah, you got a religion. Listen, you got one heck of a, of, of a church thing, a religious thing, but it's smoke. It's dust. There's nothing in it. There's nothing to it. Yet I am the Lord your God. In other words, make the main thing the main thing. It's about God. Ever since the land of Egypt, and you shall know no God but me. Give up on everything else. For there is no savior, savior besides me. I know you, I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of the great drought. When they had pasture and were filled, they were filled with their heart uh, and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. I made every provision for you. And instead of making you grateful, it made you forgetful. So I will be to them like a lion. You didn't want to remember me? You forgot me when I was good to you? Not a problem. I'm taking you to the woodshed. And you'll remember me then. So I will be to them a lion. Like a leopard by the road, I will lurk. I will meet them like a bear deprived of her cubs. I will tear open their rib cage, and there I will devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. I'd say he made his point. O oh, Israel, you are destroyed. You just don't know it yet. But your help is from me. I will be your king. Where there, Where is any other that he may save you in all your cities. There's no help any place else. And your judges to whom you said, give me a king and princes, I will give you a king in my anger. 
and took him away in my wrath. I gave you a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is stored up. The sorrows of a woman in childbirth shall come upon him. In other words, the pain will be ever increasing until you've turned. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long where children are born. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be your plagues. O oh, grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Did you ever wonder where Paul got the saying that he said? Hmm? He quoted this scripture when he talked about the grave and death no longer having power. He was saying what God promised, he's done it. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Though he is fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, Assyria. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness. Then his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall plunder the treasury of every desirable prize. Again, God uses an economy to deal with the way we were people. Make a note of it. Samaria is held guilty, for she has rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. Their women with child ripped open. The Assyrian custom. 14th verse, 14th chapter. O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all our iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. Changed heart. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are God's, for in you the fatherless finds mercy. What are they saying? They're saying, we will make it all about you. We will not and no longer make it all about us. Amen? We are not going to rely on peace treaties that we crafted. We are going to believe you when you say, have no dealings with those people. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger has turned away from him. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall grow like the lily and lengthen his roots like Lebanon. The cedars of Lebanon, lilies planted by waters. His branches shall spread. His beauty shall be like an olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall be revived like grain and grow like a vine. Their scent shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Wine in scripture is always a type of joy. Ephraim will say, what have I to do anymore with idols? I have heard and observed him. I am like a green cypress tree. Your fruit is found in me. Who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. The ninth verse condenses the entire book into one statement. This is the theme. This is the whole point. Read it one more time. Who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. People who believe that what God says is true and right and orders their lives according to what he says, there's peace in it. There is the abundance provided by God in it. There is a life 
that is worth living. And repentance will bring you right back to where you start. And you can have it again. Father, we thank you humbly for your word. Lord God, I fear for my country and my countrymen. Father, I pray, turn us back to you. Ignite a flame in our heart, Lord, to seek hard after you. Do what's needed. Lord, let it be said from our state house and from our courts, from our schools, from our church houses, Lord, that you're our God and we're your people. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, Master. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.